Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Thank you for joining me and pressing that play button. Hopefully you got notified. If you didn't get notified, maybe you should turn on the uh, subscription. You know, you go and you subscribe and you hit that little bell. Click it. Or, you know, hook up with me on Telegram or Twitter or whatever. Telegram, every, all the links for everything, people. It's all in the, uh, it's all below. If you even want to contact me, just go, in, go into the description of the video. What a show. <laughs> what a show we have today. Oh my goodness. The last program that we talked about. Yeah, Uranus is a planet, by the way. And uh, we're going to talk about Uranus tonight. That's right. We're going to talk about Uranus. Again, we're going to talk about it, isn't it? It's the whole world needs to hear about Uranus. It does. It does. But we had to come together once again. We had to. I just did the program about the vulture, about the California condor giving the virgin birth, and a lot of people were like, Jacob, don't you know they lay eggs? I get it. I know that. It wasn't, you know, with the uh, male genetic DNA. There was nothing. There was no male was involved, okay? The, the, the news media, they, they, were, they were calling it the virgin birth. I had said that, you know, it's kind of like the uh, the Antichrist being being kind of taken over, if you will. The child of darkness, you know, being discovered in the world. Which, by the way, just literally happened. Two hundred and forty thousand year old child of darkness, they're calling it. <laughs> oh, good grief. And this is just the beginning of the program. Way do you get to the end? Found in these intricate caves. These it's like a like a maze down there. A relative of ours, not quite the same, but similar. Homo naladia or something. Naladia, nalatatatatata. Homo naladia. It was unveiled was unveiled in the cradle of civilization. That's right. You know the place. So you got this child of darkness. Guess what? It was uh, it was found in a cave called the Rising Star. <laughs> the Rising Star. And they name it the Child of Darkness and the uh, the the skull which you saw in the thumbnail. Spooky looking, right? young boy, child of darkness. Very interesting. I found it interesting, but you know what I found more interesting? So many of you, you reached out to me and you said, Jacob, don't you know the vultures are everywhere now? I see them all the time. Never saw them before. I get so many emails. I got so many emails about the vultures everywhere. So I'm like, well, maybe I should look at this again. So I did. Whoa. Now you probably remember at the last program, we talked about the, the virgin birth, right? The egg without the male. The, uh, of two California condors. And there was a discovery of a wine press, 2,700 year old wine press. If you haven't seen the show, my last show, check it out. I'll link it right here. You can press that little thing, that thing that pops up if you wanna watch it or just wait till the end of the video and just go and watch the video that I did before this. So, so many of you said the vultures, so I decided to look into it. You know what? And that's right, the vultures are everywhere. I didn't notice this. I didn't notice this when I was doing the first video. But now, it's like, okay, so what are you telling us, Lord? Why are vultures everywhere? Okay? It, I just did a program on uh, vampires, right? Remember the uh, the Netflix show? Vampirism. Celebrities love bloodlust, but here they turn Christ into a vampire. It's no wonder that Travis Scott's latest cover art was that of him as a vampire. They have this strange fascination with evil. Perhaps it's because they're agents of hell, if you will. The concert depicted here. You see the entrance to the gates of hell. Not just that, but look at the stage. It was that Swiss mountain, the Gothard tunnel, the tunnel through the demonic mountain itself. This does not look like a man who is after goodness. It's no wonder that 666 months and six days before that concert, the Church of Satan was founded. Don't you think that's odd? Like perhaps there is more to what's going on? But not just that. Look at Astro World. It closed 666 weeks. 
And then here we see the upside down cross on the stage. It's clear what's happening, but listen to this. I'm Mr. Body Catcher. Slaughter Gang Soul Snatcher Travis and Drake were screaming. They're after souls, snatching souls. But the Lord showed us this two weeks ago when I did a show called The Invasion of the Christ Snatchers, talking about Travis Scott, Kylie Jenner, and the aliens, of course, because they're trying to create a new race. It's Lady Gaga in the corner there. Watch that video. A lot of people told me this was a doorway. He's literally wearing a shirt of transformation. But what it is, people, it's a monolith. A monolith. Because something's happening in the world today. It's no wonder that Travis Scott is promoting the monolith. PlayStation, the event. Do you find that strange? Well, I certainly don't. Because I talked about this. I talked about the time of trouble that was coming. I saw the monolith as also a sign of Christ's return, but also a sign of the Antichrist, the Great Reset. Talking a lot about that stuff. Ironically, there's a big Marvel movie coming out, Morbius, starring Jared Leto. You know, the guy who likes to dress up and, you know, have a, have a, you know, a severed head at his side at the Met Gala. Jared Leto, lead singer of a band, thinks he's a little, people call him a little bit of a cult leader during the beginning of the virus of the crown. He was on an island with his, you know, his followers. They were all dressed in white. So he's playing a, a, a vampire. Really, when people are liars and you judge a tree by the fruit, it's hard to trust them. Hard to think that they got our best interest in mind, right? You think? That's okay. Don't worry about it. I told you it was going to get rocky, right? Didn't I tell you? I told you. I said it was going to get, it was going to be the hardest, the hardest the last part of this. There are these two eclipses. If you're new to the program, two eclipses, Great American Eclipse. You had one over here. You had one over here. Seven years in between them. The next one's happening in 2024. And I had said because of these eclipses, because they make like a cross and X over the United States, judgment was coming, division was coming, darkness was coming, cross-sected at a place called Little Egypt, Carbondale, spooky times. I also talked about on the program that December 14th, 2020 would most likely be the uh, the beginning, like the beginning of uh, Jacob's trouble. through the mark but there was this 1211 days in between the eclipses and as we know on December 14th a lot of things a lot of things happened but I find it strange the vulture Morbius being featured I find it strange that there's a big article about the difference between buzzards and vultures on mental floss. By the way, in the United States, buzzard is a vulture. They're the same thing, but in other places, buzzard's like a hawk. These are birds of prey, by the way. Some people try to correct me and say, hey, they're not birds of prey, they're scavengers. Yeah, they are, but they're still birds of prey. We can't demonize them just because, you know, we, our view of what is a beautiful bird is not what a vulture is. Because they're like the other, uh, uh, as many people told me, they're the cleanup crew. I did some research. I did more research on the vulture. The cleanup crew, they get rid of things like disease and viruses and they, they, it's a pretty good thing. Otherwise you'd have carcasses piling up all the time. Give you a little ketchup because with the virgin birth, I said that this is 
the time where you're gonna see, you know, that the, the, the system has been trying to tell us that there's something ugly, or I should say something dark, something man-made, something carnal being born in the world. Little Nas X being pregnant, Drake with the pregnant, there was always the pregnancy. We've seen it uh, symbolically being played out. Lady Gaga with the egg, coming in with the egg, years ago talking about a hybrid race, a new race from within. Yeah. All of these things that we've talked about on the show, if you're new, oh my goodness, I'm so excited for you because you can go back and you can just have like a binge fest. And it'll get you excited because you know that the days that we're entering into, even though they're gonna be harder, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be all right, you're gonna be fine. You know why? Because you love, because you forgive, because you wanna be better, because you wanna do nice things. God's calling us out of this system for a reason. It wasn't pleasant for Israel when they had to leave Egypt, right? It wasn't pleasant. They even complained. They're like, oh, it was so much nicer. It was so much nicer there when I had my uh, my leeks and my pots and my pans. Now I'm in the wilderness, but you're still getting fed. We're going to be okay. God's leading us to the promised land. That's the end of the story. That's the good thing. Big thing, big shakeup. Big shakeup's coming. Big shakeup's coming. Galactic shakeup's coming. And big comet's coming. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But I want you to uh, to be excited because the vulture... It's like so obvious now to me. It wasn't as obvious because of the discovery of the wine press and the vulture. I had said we're looking at a big judgment, right? Possibly very, very soon. Something something extraordinary, something big, something not great. Not great for the people that are doing harmful things, evil things in the world. Not great for that. But change nonetheless in the grand scheme of things. It's good news, the gospel. Got nothing to worry about in the grand scheme of things. Just keep loving. Someone told me, uh, he said, oh my goodness, we're being plagued by the vultures. So it turns out North Carolina is one of the places plagued by like, they got like turkey vultures everywhere. Go, 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 go. Headlines talking about their toxic vomit and their poopy everywhere that they're leaving all over the place. People are not happy. You know where they're really not happy? Hershey. Hershey, you know, the chocolate and all. They got vultures too, got big vulture problems. Isn't that weird? All of a sudden, like everybody's got vulture problems. Never seen as many as they have right now. just there. Canada too. Victoria. <sighs> don't, don't even get me started about Canada. Don't even get me started. Turkey vultures. It's just uh, all of a sudden vultures are everywhere. And why is this a big deal? Well, I didn't know that in Revelation 19, literally two, two paragraphs on top of each other, it mentions how we're going to enter into that wine press and that those vultures are going to be called to the supper of the Lord, and they're gonna feast on the flesh of kings and the power people and the and the mighty and even the small and the great and the uh, and the uh, slaves and the and the uh, you know bond servants. A lot of people, a lot of people that aren't looking for the truth no matter what the cost, asking for the truth no matter what the cost. People that aren't loving, people aren't forgiven, people that are operating in ugliness. Alaskans, too. They've been spotting turkey vultures everywhere. So you got these hundreds of black vultures descending on um, Hershey. You got these vultures having a problem all over the Carolinas. You got these vultures in Canada. You got these vultures in Alaska. You got these vultures, vultures, vultures everywhere, right? everywhere and in the big Marvel movie. So why is this interesting? Because I've said we're going to have this, you know, this dark antichrist birth or something, right? Where we're going to see it 
it's going to be more transparent. People are going to behave even more poorly than they have already. And uh, go figure, right? Same day, Child of Darkness. Child of Darkness is uh, discovered. So, uh, here already, I guess you could say. Buzzards are already circling. Why is that an interesting thing? Because in, in Scripture, Jesus said that when the vultures are circling above, the, the, there the carcasses will be. This is almost like a, uh, it's almost like God is saying, prepare, because when you see the vultures gathering, you know that that judgment's coming. The great wine press of the Lord. And what is a wine press, by the way? That he treads down outside of the, you know, because this has to do with the harvest, the harvest, God's harvest. He's coming in. The grapes, they're, they're ripe. You know, what is he going to find? Just throw the sickle in. That's what God says to the angels. Gather it up and then just tread down. This is a big deal because while we're going to see, you know, such great koofy, spooky. Yeah, it's going to be, look, I, I just want to get y'all ready. So when it happens, when it happens, you're going to know. Okay, I've been like putting out little tweets here and there about NYC and I got the thing that looks kind of like a like a meteor coming in like this. Not that I think that a meteor is going to I don't know why I just put it out one day I just felt it. I just felt it, but that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be like fire coming down from heaven. I don't know what it is. I had a dream about Elon Musk. I shared it a while ago. SpaceX rocket. I was standing and then saw a rocket and then saw a big ba boom boom. You know, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know, maybe nothing. Maybe nothing. But we got Remembrance Day coming up, 11-11. We got it coming up, Armistice Day, 11-11, to remember World War I, which started at the 11th hour of the, uh, you know, the 11th minute, the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month, 19 I saw heaven standing open okay and what is that where is heaven kingdom of heaven is where is it out there beyond the uh, the Milky Way is it I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you will be too so are you are you out there or are you here where's heaven Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you it's in your midst literally in you you can't say, look over here or look over there, for behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Isn't that great? It's inside of all of us. So, guess what I saw? This is what the angel is saying. Uh, he, he shows John this beautiful thing, the Isle of Patmos, his vision of the revelation of the day of Christ, which is right now. Heaven standing open. Standing open. Mean it's open. It's open. Hasn't been closed. It's open for you. As for the truth, it's open. And there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. There's no deception in the kingdom of God. There's no lies. You can trust the word of God. You can trust that if you turn to the Holy Spirit and you turn and and, and you, you just kind of submit yourself to Christ. You just kind of say, Lord, I just want to do your will. And you're going to stumble. You're going to make mistakes. Old habits, you know, they die hard, but this makes it a lot easier because the vultures are there to snatch it away. Sudden, there's just been this large flock of vultures. And rather than be mad that they're there, um, kind of ask yourself why they're there. Is there something that they're smelling, um, you know, whether it be dangerous or not, that is having them roost there? For now, the whose rider is called faithful and true. With justice, he judges and wages war. His eyes are like a blazing fire. And on his head are many crowns. He has his name written on him that no one knows but he himself. Isn't that interesting? He's dressed in a ro robe dripped in blood. His name is the Word of God. We've talked a lot about that. I just did John chapter 1. Here you go. Right there. Check that out. Find out who the Word of God is. Find out where the Word of God is. Oh. 
And the armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth was a sharp sword, a sword, words out of your mouth pierces, can give life or it's death. Power of life and death is in our tongue. This day, heaven is open and the rider who is faithful and true is coming and there is an army, an army with him. And out of his mouth, out of Christ's mouth, out of the word of God's mouth, a sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. Here's where we get to with all the discoveries and everything. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh it is written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And here we go, winepress of God. Gather those grapes. Right? Put you through, you're gonna be put through the fire. You're gonna be tested, tormented. That's the word tormented. That word, torment, to torment, to agitate to test the purity of, to test the purity of precious metals. That's actually a literal definition of torment in the book of Revelation. To see how pure you are, so that we could see that gold that's within you. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried with a loud verse to all the birds of the air. Many translations? Vultures. Come and gather together for the great supper of God so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, the mighty, and of, of their horses and their riders, their armies, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. And then this leads us into um, the uh, rule of the Antichrist, which we know is coming. We're going to see a world figure. It's gathering together. I've already basically said who it was over the uh, years, meaning not that that's the antichrist, if you will, but the power player, you know, the power player for years now. If it's been in thumbnails, it's been in videos, it's just gonna be one guy. One guy is gonna be the face of this thing and the dragon's gonna give him power. So if this was a literal thing, very strong nation, maybe that, uh, you know, is known as a dragon is gonna give power to this guy who brings everybody together. He's just gonna be a power player. They're already bringing the world together. We're going to marshal our efforts together, Prince Charles said, right? We need a marshalling force. Yes, we're going to marshal our force to fight these things. He's getting every word in one world, a world effort. Got the, uh, they got the uh, the house of Abraham, right? The Abrahamic house going down. They got a new language that marries Hebrew and Arabic together. Talk about how cool now, because everything's going together with the Abrahamic accord. Who put those together again? Who was that again? Who was that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. Gonna be another temple being built. Some people say it's already built. Some people say it's somewhere else. I don't know, you know. I know that the temple of God is, is us, our hearts. So the symbolism of all this, everything playing out the way it is. Look, I haven't been wrong before, right? When we look at things, Jesus said this. So this is something that you can do too. He says, you can judge the weather by the uh, sky. You know, if it looks a certain way, you know it's gonna be good weather the next day. If it looks, a, you know, it looks a certain way, it's gonna be bad weather. Fishermen know this. It's very important, you know? It's like they have an expression about the sky. You know, when I started telling everybody that I thought the world was gonna go upside down and all that stuff because of a couple of weird dreams I had and kind of by looking at everything, it, was, it seemed to be going a certain way. I didn't really think it was gonna be, you know, like this this quickly. I, I really didn't. And I was really kind of hoping that I was a little bit, uh, just being a little bit too uh, concerned. And then I started thinking, you know, power of life and death is in the tongue. Maybe I should stop talking about bad stuff because maybe maybe I'm putting it out there because I don't want to put it out there. I definitely don't want to put stuff that, you know, I'm, I feel is going to happen out there. But I'm doing it anyway because I see uh, a spiritual significance, which I see the vultures when they're going to feast, come to the suburb. I see it as like, because um, birds in scripture are messengers, they're thoughts. The, 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 the dove descended on, on Christ, and that's how John knew this is the one. The dove, the one that the dove rests on. 
Think about that, by the way. You want a little, uh, you want a little, uh, you want a little insight? What does a dove represent? Peace. Whoever peace rests upon. You should feel that. You should get a little, uh, whoever peace rests upon. Whoever you see peace sitting on, the, the word of God, the truth of God, that's the one. It's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So I hope that you get some peace resting on you, especially with what's coming. Because I feel like it, it, it's going to get a little uh, rocky. It's a good word, rocky. I didn't think it was going to get this bad. I didn't think it was going to get to... I mean, it's got to... This is... We're in a different world, right? Did videos a while back. I said we're going to be entering a new heaven, a new earth. Everything's going to be different. Everything's going to be different. And it's definitely different. But the gate, the gate of heaven is opened. And Christ is coming with a lot of his saints. This is why we're told to rejoice and be glad. Even in the midst of all this nonsense. Just a couple of uh, paragraphs earlier. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen bright and clean, was given to her to wear. And of course, we're the bride of Christ. We are. Have we been preparing? Have you been praying? Have you been seeking? Have you been trying to be better? That's all, that's all it takes. There's a repentant heart. That's a bride that makes herself ready for a new relationship, for a new day. And the one that peace rests upon, there you know the sun is. So the birds of the air that come down and pluck at the flesh, okay, of the flesh. And what is flesh? The flesh is at enmity with the spirit. Flesh is with at enmity. The flesh and the spirit, they don't jive, man. What the flesh wants to do, and by the flesh I mean the lust thereof, the pride of life, your ego, the lust that you, I want this, greed. These are the lusts of the flesh. And they're not, they don't jive well with the spirit of God, which is compassion, so if the door is opened and Christ is coming and the angel shouts, let the birds of the air feast for the supper of the Lord, the Lord is going to come in our hearts and he's going to take away those things that we want gone. And we're like, oh Lord, come on, get this thorn out of here. But also the carbon copy, remember we talked about the carbon copy, the literal carbon-based life form, the 666 protons, electrons, neutrons, the 666 that we see everywhere, right? The, 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 uh, the imitation, you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, that's me, but that's not you. you say, someone says, who are you? You say, my name's Jacob, that's not you. God gives you your name, your true nature. That's why my last name is not really Israel. Go figure, right? God gave it to me, hello. So while in the spirit we see the uh, the message of God, the truth of God, the birds of God feasting on the flesh. In the literal, we see vultures everywhere, circling. Vultures everywhere, vomiting, pooping. Vultures everywhere, carbon copy. So, it stands to reason that if it's happening in the spiritual, it's going to happen in the physical too. This is going to be a big thing. It's going to be a big thing that's coming. So, don't worry. Remember, I talked about on the last show, if you're up on the housetop, don't go down to get the uh, stuff. When you're in the field, don't run back and get the stuff. Don't worry. It's going to come so quick. Don't get stressed out and be like, I got to build myself a shelter. Because I don't know what's really happening. But I do know that when it happens, there won't be time th to make sure. Well, I mean, maybe if you got a couple of bug up bads and you have them in the car and you got to leave quick. I don't know. But the scripture says, don't worry. Stop worrying. We got to stop stressing out about things. By the way, Ethan's doing amazing. Second day now without a fever. I didn't catch anything. Yeah, and I don't have that thing. Just so you know, I'm not making a statement. I don't need to make a statement. I don't need to do nothing. There's so much that I'd love to talk about. I'd love to share. But I do if you listen. So I used to worry about this thing. I even wrote about it in the novel. I wrote about this day. This day where people were just turned over to just... Horrible day. Horrible day, literally, in 2022. I put the, and I wrote this 2008. So strange. So, by the way, get the novel, if you haven't. Please, such a great story. Please, enjoy it, because it's really about you. Link's in the description. So, after the vultures, after the birds, they have their feast. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth 
kings, no, notice the beast and the kings of the earth. So you got this one figure, you got the, the kings of the earth, but really that beast is, is the ego of man. There's one of them and it's yucky. It's the antichrist spirit it sits in the temple of God. Point to your temples. Where's the temple of God? The antichrist. John says it's already in the world and we see the works and the fruit thereof. The beast, the day that it really takes hold, because it knows its days are short, because the Lord is coming, going to be revealed, and the whole world, everybody will know, from the east to the west, there'll be no denying it. The beast knows that it's got to, you know, it's got to act. So what are they? They're doing everything they can. You, gotta, you know, I want my egotistical life to carry on, so I'm going to get that neural link. I'm going to plug into the system, and I'm going to, I'm going to be eternal. That's what these uh, people, Jeff Bezos and these guys, spend so much money to live forever. Irony is, uh, this is the place of the dead. <laughs> Would you really want to be around here all the time? We're here to do something. We're here to set people free. It's like a prison. So I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to wage war against the rider of the horse and his army. That happens within you. You make a decision that you want to, uh, you know, you want to know the Lord. And what happens within you? The beast and his armies, all those negative thoughts, all those addictions, supposed addictions, all these things, all these diagnoses. Is that a word? I don't know. But the stuff they tell you, that's what you, you got this, you got that. They told me, oh, you got post-traumatic stress from all the stuff that happened. Oh, you're borderline, bar, borderline uh, uh, bipolar. Yeah, that's another one. They give me all the, you got to take this medicine. You got to take this medicine. I'm not making a statement. Just so you know, it made things worse a long time ago. I, I had even a li little bit of a breakdown. I, I did a video about depression. Check it out. In Christ, we have power over this. So the beast is going to try to make war, right? All these negative thoughts. Oh, you're not worthy. Oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you can't pray. Look at what you just did. All these things. That's the accuser. That's Satan. That's the liar. You have these negative thoughts in your head. Don't listen. That's the beast in his armies trying to keep you from the truth. Trying to keep you from peace. Having that dove rest upon you. Having Christ in your heart. By the way, you can't fail, so don't worry. It's going to happen regardless. Just it's a little easier if you're in on it, and then you can start to really rule and reign with Christ. That's what it means. Where's the kingdom of heaven? Within you. Where are you ruling and reign? Within you. you got to rule and reign your thinking. From here, from here, from here to here. So the beast has gathered his armies. The beast is captured. Isn't that good news? Beast was captured with his false prophet who performed the signs on his behalf. All these signs. He, he lied and deluded those who received the mark of the beast and worshipped the image. But the beast and the false prophet and all those things, all these magical things that they, they do to get you to believe that what they're saying in your head is true. Cast. They're destroyed. That's the day. That's the day we're in. And as it's going to happen spiritually, it's, it's going to happen literally. So that means, the, you know, yeah, that means war is coming too. War's coming too. Not right away. Something else, pff, something else happens. Then pff, now it's time to make war against, you know. You start to worry. You start to think, okay, well, you're doing God's will. They're going to come for you. They're going to come for you. They're already coming for religion. But is that the truth? Meaning, if you're really serving God and you're seeking God, can anything stop what God has planned for you? No. So nothing's happening outside of God's will right now, people. So just relax. Know that you're good enough. Know that you're worthy. Take a breath. Take a breath with me. Feels good. Just trust and have faith, especially with the days to come. When it happens, and whatever it is, we'll know. When it happens, it should be an encouragement to you because you remember Jacob told you. Jacob told you. It's all good. It's all working out. So... I can't talk about all the stuff that's happening with all the planets and all. There's huge, huge news there. Wanted to get to it today. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Say that. I'm gonna do that. Uh, give you another show this week. So uh, please do do me a favor. Like, like, uh, like this video. Comment. Subscribe if you're new here. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to those people that hit me up on PayPal. Thank you for your beautiful emails and your encouragement and, and the pictures with, you know, the I am a witness and the teach me the truth and the, all of this stuff. It's just remarkable. I love you all so very much. 
thank you for those who got the novel and are leaving these beautiful reviews. I mean, the reviews. Just go and click the link just to read some of the reviews. My goodness, we're approaching like, I think like 550 reviews already. <sighs> wow, that's good. That's good. So it's a great novel. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to put the trailer at the end of this video. So if you're new and you don't know anything about my novel, you'll be able to watch it. All right. I love you all. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. September 10th. Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the East to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling.